Bahoromia. Mr Chair, that speaker quite clearly said, shamefully, that this was, and there were issues relevant to the tyranny of low expectations. And, and that member is really following the minister responsible for this in producing some of the most shameful legislation in this house. It is shameful, and they know that. And there's more than third party support. And he said that this was about their manifesto, Mr Chair. And it is about the manifesto, but the manifesto all said, also said four key other things. It said that it had an edict which would improve the economy. They got no plan. It didn't happen. They said that they would create more jobs, and none of that happened. And there were, every, there were two or three other issues. And it is fascinating when you read this legislation, and it is premised on a strong labour market. Well, this is amazing, because the unemployment rate generally is running at 6%. For Māori, it is tracking up higher, and Pacific Islands people, knocking 11%. In Wairau, it is on nearly 60%. How the hang do you expect to get people, find people a job there when there is no basis? And this is good old right-necked National Party weeping manifesto stuff. It is outrageous. And he said that this will help them out of poverty. And I watch Mr Joyce over there sitting there and I wonder what is behind the capping of those places in university and wherever. Myself and I at Mahuta and Calvin were privileged enough this morning to talk to about 35 middle-aged, mature-aged woman. Average age, I'd say, about 40. Now, it's fascinating when this increasing push is about the rangataki, about the youth only. And there's a trick of the trap in that too. Because at the end of the day, you feed it because it's cheap. And you line that up with a 90-day bill, what do you get? You get uncertainty, you get insecurity in the labour market, you get all of those relevant issues. And then when... And he, this gentleman talks about the prospects of a job. Can I tell him that the great leader of the Labour Party, Phil Goff, went to open a food market this morning? And, there was, and I'll tell you again, so you understand the picture, because it's surreal. There were 150 jobs there and 2,500 lined up for it. How the hang can you push legislation when that happens? That is a disgrace. Same as the Kentucky Fried down there, same as the vegetable place down there, and that member knows when he was a policeman, it has got worse. He understands that. It has got worse. And the bill certainly doesn't have much in there. I'm afraid to say, I'm afraid, I'm afraid to say Minister, there's third party support in this country that is growing, that parents are paying for youngsters out of their own pocket. And then we get this income splitting notion that this is relevant to this bill, uh, my dear friend. It is relevant. Income splitting for who? It is only for the rich people. It is only for the well-off. You tell me how many parents, working class parents, can split their income at the moment. And I'll tell you about the Pacific Islanders and the Maori in this country who are being trashed and trashed into the dungeons of doom by this misconstrued legislation by a minister who doesn't care, who should know better, who should know better. And if you couple together all of those issues with the Minister of Finance continually singing the song that there's not too much money and the attack on the public service, what do you reckon is coming up? No. You know, it is unfair. It is amazing that the Attorney General said, the Attorney General, this Minister's colleague, said this was discriminatory and it was a disgrace and that the Presbyterian Church said they're not too sure where the hell this is coming from. They were saying it was one of the worst bits of legislation that they've ever read or they've ever, he ever heard about. And this really is a simple exercise in targeting beneficiaries, sole parents. Where is the protection to the child? When you're six years old, everything's supposed to be tickety-boo. And what we can talk about on this side of the house is ensuring that income-related rents were there, that 14 weeks of maternity leave was real and that at the end of the day people's rights were intact 
And I think that the, and badly, Mr. Chair, the Honourable Parakura Horomia. And I think, Mr. Chair, that you know, unemployment is at the moment 159,000. So if you're coupling this with a very, very weak labour market, which is one of the weakest in the last 16 years, how the hang is this going to work? How is this legislation going to work? When those people at the Aotearoa Wananga were telling us this morning that they're not too sure where their certification will head to. And Mr Joyce capped them. So you're talking about skilling, you're talking about opening trade academies, and you shortened the 14,000 apprenticeships that were alive, and a lot of them didn't finish them when the national government came in because they cut the funding. They cut part of the funding. That's what happened. That's what happened. And virtually all of the government departments who were consulted on this gave advice that was totally contrary to what the minister wanted to, to bring up. In 1936, there were no domestic purposes benefits. There seems to be heading that way now. Who protects them? There is real competition in the sense of the job. And Mr Joyce always makes the failing mistake of thinking that other people do not understand what's going on. We do understand. And on behalf of all those working class families and those people, Māori and Pacific, they're being ill-treated. It's a disgrace. And if you get out in the regions like I walked past two winds offices the other day, they were sitting on the bloody street, lined up. They were sitting out on the street waiting for their turn. And then we get this huffing and puffing about saying that this is going to be good for beneficiaries. Yep, you know, they, they're supposed to reapply after 12 months for the benefit. That's all well. But the stoke in the economy is not happening. The GDP is slipping. The macro has put asunder. And a whole lot of small businesses and medium businesses, 80 in Hawke's Bay are closing, 9 in Gisborne. What's that about? What's that about? And then we get into cheap labour. You're getting into cheap labour. You know that you're knocking them out. You know that they're knocking them out. And the Minister of Finance said himself, the biggest ministry in this country will soon be the Justice Department. People start thieving. People start going on the hunt for their families when they're treated like this. And so you need to be clear about the, about the crime. Pardon? No, not necessarily. People need to own it. But the majority should not play judgment on the minority just because they're in the seat that you're in, my friend. You were a policeman, and I was in the community development, and you used to talk sense. You're learning a lot of nonsense from ministers like this. You need to stop it. And the member needs to understand that. So this loss of percentage, like 50% off the benefit, if you don't turn up for an interview, look, these interviews have been going on for a long, long time. This has been going on before the Belmont theory came down here about labour market and creating jobs. And it just seems to be that the officials are being bullied to do this. And Minister, I need to tell you that this is an incredible, unjust bit of legislation. The bill appears to limit the right to be free from discrimination. These limitations can be justified under Section 5 of the Bill of Rights Act. Now, people will argue that. The Attorney General in this country is saying to you, wake up, stop doing this, and you won't listen. It's a bit like Heather, what's her name, and the other fella who's been punishing the, 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 the city stuff and that. And the Presbyterian support said this in detail. We find it unconscionable that any government in New Zealand would oppose measures that will inevitably increase poverty and hardship for some of the poorest children in this country and further penalise those in the most unfortunate of life circumstances. That wasn't the round table. That wasn't the Māori Council. That wasn't the Māori Wardens. That was a recognised organisation who have supported those people, those beneficiaries. The widows are put at a disadvantage. So where are we coming from with that? Mr. Chair, I need to tell you that this is just unbelievable. Somebody mentioned the intergenerational adjustment over there. Well, I'll tell you about inter intergenerational adjustment. 200 years on from being colonised, things start changing. And if you aren't given a fair go when that change comes,